lessons from the Old Testament. The last prophetic word of God of the Old Testament, the book of Malachi the prophet. Chapter 1 and verse 6, the book of Malachi the prophet. Chapter 1 and verse 6. As son honors his father and a servant his master, if I am a father, where is the honor due to me? If I am a master, where is the respect due me? Says the Lord Almighty. It is you, O priests, who sow contempt for my name. But you ask, how have we sown contempt in your name? You place defiled food on my altar. But you ask, how have we defiled you? By saying, that the Lord's table is contemptible. When you bring blind animals for sacrifice, is that not wrong? When you sacrifice crippled or diseased animals, is that not wrong? Try offering them to your governor. Would he be pleased with you? Would he accept you? Says the Lord Almighty. Now, implore God to be gracious to us. With such offerings from your hands, will He accept you? Says the Lord Almighty. Oh, that one of you who would shut the temple doors so that you will not light yourself useless fires on my altar. I am not pleased with you, says the Lord Almighty, and I will not accept no offering from your hands. My name will be great among the nations, from the rising to the setting of the sun. In every place, inc incense and pure offerings will be brought to my name, because my name will be great amongst the nation, says the Lord Almighty. But you profane it by saying of the Lord's table it is defiled and of its food it is contemptible. And you say, what a burden. And you sniff at it contemptuously, says the Lord Almighty. When you bring injured, crippled, or diseased animals and offer them as sacrifices, should I accept them from your hands, says the Lord. Cursed is the cheat who has an acceptable male in his flock and vows to give it, but then sacrifices a blemished animal to the Lord. For I am a great king, says the Lord Almighty. And my name is to be feared among the nations. And now this admonition is for you, O priests. If you do not listen, and if you do not set your heart to honor my name, says the Lord Almighty, I will send curse upon you, and I will curse your blessings. Yes, I have already cursed them, because you have not set your heart to honor me. Because of you, I will rebuke your descendants. I will spread on your faces the offal from your festival sacrifices, and you will be carried off with it. And you will know that I have sent you this admonition so that my covenant with Levi may continue, says the Lord Almighty. My covenant was with him, a covenant of life and peace. And I gave them to him. This called for reverence, and he re revered me and stood in awe of my name. True instruction was in his mouth, and nothing false was found on his lips. He walked with me in peace and uprightness, and turned many from sin. For the lips of a priest ought to, 
to preserve knowledge and from his mouth men should seek instruction because he is the messenger of the Lord Almighty. But you have turned from the way and by your teaching have seized have caused rather many to stumble, and you have violated the covenant with Levi, says the Lord Almighty. So I have cursed you to be despised and humiliated before all the people, because you have not followed my ways, but have shown partiality in matters of the law. I mean. This word was made to the people of Israel right after Nehemiah someone who was sent from God to build the gates and the walls of Jerusalem and that happened 400 in 444 before Christ and that was the great mystery and sign rather that Daniel the prophet confirmed and prophesied about that from this year 444 before Christ and for 69 weeks 70 and the 70th is of the Antichrist in 69 weeks the Word of God will come down on earth the one who will lead Jesus Christ that is and he will save anyone who would believe in his name and indeed it is amazing that it is exactly 69 weeks three years that is but these three years of uh, the Israelites means there's a difference rather between the years of Israel and the years that as we count them and Nehemiah actually uh, tried as hard as he could to turn the people of Israel back and he was a commander in the people of Israel and Christ helped him out in these difficult situations to build the walls of Jerusalem that were demolished in 42 days especially with all the added issues that the that the people of Israel had to deal with from the people of the neighboring nations but also the people of Israel within there were issues within the people of Israel people that were born from flesh and they were flesh and they could not obey to the law of Moses and they would turn to the left or to the right continuously turning away from the commandments of God but Nehemiah was always able to bring them back and 450 about before Christ Nehemiah was uh, died and there was no word of God Ezra was also dead and the people of Israel again as carnal people uh, subduing themselves to the desires of their eyes the desires of the flesh and the things of this world are not being able to get away from these desires and subdue themselves to God they were turning away from the Word of God and about 400 before Christ God raised up the last prophet that is Malachi and that name means messenger of God so that he might bring a message to the people of God and that message started from this age and the situation of the people of Israel was dire and it reached Elijah the prophet John the Baptist that is who came with the power and the spirit of, of John the Baptist to prepare a nation to be able to see Christ and he continued on talking about the coming of Christ and Malachi even talked about the thousand year reign in other words the whole plan of God and he starts 
from the most critical question, the most important question that God is proposing to people. Because God wants to speak with His people. And He says, Do you know that I loved you? And the people of Israel replied, How have you loved us? How can your love be seen and confirmed? And the answer is that God is comparing to confirm how much He loved you. Who loved the people of Israel. And He says, Esau was Jacob's brother. But he disregarded the firstborn rights and he lost uh, the uh, blessings that came with it. But I loved you. And how can that be confirmed? The, pe the person that Christ loves, that is. Who is the person that belongs to Christ? You can see him from his fruition and results. Now see uh, Esau and the heritage of Esau that was Edom. Um, ruins. There's nothing left there. And not only that, but Edom as well they are saying to themselves that we are powerful. And all these ruins, we're going to build back up. And I am replying to them. And he speaks to the people of Israel. And he speaks to the ones that are listening that I promise myself I will again destroy and crush what they will rebuild. It is amazing and terrifying for, for a person to find God against them. And we need to remind ourselves what the Word of God is saying to us today. To the humble in heart, God is going to give from His glory. He's going to stand against the ones that are boasting in heart. It is very important for a person for, for, for a person to find grace in front of God is to have a humble heart, a broken heart, to allow God to live in him, to be trembling in the word of God always, so that he may not turn to the left or to the right, so that God may be pleased in his life, and especially to seek and ask for anything that is according to the word of God, according to the heart of God. Because then and only then, because the and they separate this because our heart is maleficent and wicked. But if we ask a heart that is according to the heart of God, then indeed a person will be able to act accordingly to the commandments of God, and God will be pleased. And now, the difference of the people of Israel and the people of Edom is now being showcased. And the Word of God says that the great difference is that Jacob is for salvation and blessing, but Esau is for ruins and curses. And now, God forgets about Esau, stops talking about Esau, and speaks about the descendants of God, that is, the people of Jacob, the descendants of Jacob, the Israelites. And He says to them, now, let me come and discuss with you. Let me tell you what your issue is and why. Even though I do want, my intention is for you to be blessed, you ended up being cursed. Is that even possible? And now he starts confirming and explaining why that is the case. The son, according to the word of God, needs to honor his father and mother and master. The Word of God says that you need to honor your father and mother so that it may be good with you in your life. And that is the great secret in the Word of God. Do you want God to work for what is good in your life? What is perfect in your life? You need to learn how to honor your father and mother. And then you will live many years as, as well. A son honors his father and servant and a servant his master says in verse 6 if I am a father therefore truly a father where is the honor due me if I am a master where is the respect due me says the Lord Almighty my fear I would add your fear for my name and now He's speaking to the ones that are supposed to run the temple of God. They're supposed to manage the spiritual 
uh, things of God, the priests. And we need to understand that everything that was written, we need to understand that is for edification as well. And after uh, we were baptized in the Spirit of God and baptized through the water and transformed, as we were reborn and baptized through water, then we are now becoming like the Israelites, a chosen nation, a holy nation set apart from God. We are not belonging to this world anymore. A, a priesthood with the power of being a priest and a king with kingmanship. And that means that you have authority to walk over serpents and the power of the enemy. And no one will be able to harm you. And priests, meaning that you have that ability, that power, that grace from God even, to pray to God the Father in the name of Jesus Christ. And whatever you ask for, you will receive. As the word of God in Jesus Christ says that you need to, if you ask, you will receive. You, you, will, you will get a reply. If you seek, you will find. And if you knock, it will be open for you. And as the word of God confirms, and it's very important for us to understand what this confirmation is about. The word of God says that I plead with you first above all to pray. This is the priesthood authority. For all your, for all people, not for your brothers only, not for the believers, but also for the neighbors, also for your enemies, also for the ones that are hating you, and for the ones that are accusing you, and the ones that are even afflicting you. For all peoples, you're supposed to bring prayers, especially for kings and anyone who is in authority or holds on toward the general because only then you because you are now the priests of God you will be able to live a peaceful life with every blessing and with the additions of all the things that you need and that is good and perfect and pleasing towards God God that wants all people to be saved and he wants all people to come back and repent and believe to God and that will be because of your prayers and because of the cleanness of your hands because then and only then if your hands are indeed clean through that cleanness you will be able to save with your prayer the one who was righteously captured because there's only one God and one interceder Jesus Christ Therefore, in the name of Jesus and by the name of Jesus, you should, you should seek and ask so that you may receive and your joy may be full. From God the Father that is. Your Father. Yes, because he who accepts God, the Almighty God, is giving him now the ability and power to be called the Son of God. Therefore, that is why he says to your heavenly Father, and you need to ask from your heavenly Father so that you may receive and your joy may be full. The question is always, no is the answer. Can I be a priest of God, ask and not receive? The answer is yes. And he explains through Malachi the prophet for edification when my prayer, the prayer of the Son of God, who is a priest and king of the Almighty, has no power and no effect. He says, It is you, O priest, who saw contempt for my name. And you even ask, because you don't understand it yet. How have we shown contempt for your name? And I'm replying back to you, You placed defiled food on my altar. But you ask, How have we defiled you? And the answer is by saying that the Lord's table is contemptible. How? When, you, when your works show it. That when you bring blind animals for sacrifice. Is that not wrong? When you sacrifice crippled or diseased animals. Is that not wrong? For you to understand how bad that is. Try offering them to your governor. Would he be pleased with you? Would he accept you? Says the Lord Almighty. Therefore, you need to pay attention about in your sacrifice. 
And the word of God actually says that you need to present. And he's talking to us now. You need to present your bodies, your bodies, as a living sacrifice, holy and perfect towards God. And that is your logical creed. Because if you present your bodies as a dead sacrifice, defiled, and not pleasing towards God, then indeed your creed is not pleasing towards God. Your doctrine and your prayer will not be heard. And when am I presenting my body as a not living sacrifice, not holy and worthy of God? The answer is when I'm not paying attention, when I'm entering my praying corner, and I'm not paying attention on how I'm starting my prayer. I'm going into my prayer corner and I'm starting off my prayer as a guilty as a guilty person. Not as a holy person, because we are faulty in many ways. I'm not entering my prayer corner and start saying, Lord, please bless me because I'm worthy of it in my own way. But I'm entering my prayer corner with a humble heart and a broken heart. A humble spirit and I'm confirming the many sins that I'm going through the sins that I know about I've understood or I don't understand yet but for my sins to be forgiven I need for sure I need to forgive all the ones that are sinning against me I need to write down the names of the people that have something against me or I have something against them because if I don't forgive them from the bottom of my heart, then my Heavenly Father will not forgive me as well. Even though I may confirm my sins, even though I may repent, my Heavenly Father will not be able to forgive my sins. Therefore, my prayer, it will, it will not be, my prayer will not be, uh, a pleasing offering towards God, but it will be a defiled, a con uh, it will not be the true sacrifice that God wants, but it will be contemptible, it will be defiled. And in the Old Testament, that applied when a person that God even calls a thief, a corn artist, he has a flock full of healthy male uh, sheep and he places a promise to God and he prays towards God in the Old Testament when he places an oath or a promise he is praying towards God and he says that if you reply back to my petition and you uh, give me what I'm asking for I'm going to give you a living sacrifice from within my flock. And instead of him bringing forward what is perfect, the best of his flock, he is giving out something that is not righteous, something that is useless, crippled, uh, blind, diseased. And, the, and God says to him then and us now, is it possible for me to accept that offering? Is that even possible? That is not a living sacrifice in front of God. Your doctrine is not perfect. How can I then accept it? It is outside the word of God. Is, that even, is it possible for me to accept it then? And for you to understand that it is impossible, try to come close, to, br to get close to one of your brothers. Someone you think is high and better than you. And you should think of all your brothers as that. And tell him words. Speak to him words. Not holy. But let him who speaks speak in holy, in holy words. Not pleasing to God. Not true. Against the word of God that is. Is he going to be happy? From the communion that you had with one another? Or is he going to say, what is wrong with him? What is he talking about? He's not going to be happy. He's going to be in sorrow for you, isn't he? And if your brother, who is greater than you, and you are servants of him, of his, 
is not pleased with your sacrifice, how much more I will I be happy with your offering? Is your sacrifice is your sacrifice going to be a reason for blessing in your life? Would I be able to bless you? That is why we need to have a special, a specific kind of way of praying. We need to repent first of all. I need to confirm all of my sins so that they may be forgiven. But firstly, we need, before that, we need to forgive all of our brothers and anyone, anything that anyone may have against us. And we cannot forgive them, we need to love them. We have faith, hope, uh, and love. And greater of all this is love. And the love that is casted out from God into our hearts. And if we don't have that love, even if we say that we love that brother, we are lying. And we are lying uh, and we know it. Because love is not something that you say. A brother asked me the other day, is love uh, something that you should be ashamed of? Something that you should hide? Of course it is. If it is a benefit, if you're obedient to the word of God. Because he who has my commandments and, and keeps them, he is the one that loves me. That is the love that the word of God is speaking about. He who has the commandments of God and keeps them, he is the one that loves God. And if you truly... Indeed, we forgive all the issues and sins of our brothers against us, but through faith, of course, that is activated through love, through the love of God that again is poured out into our hearts, then God is pleased. And then He will open up His embrace as He did for the wayward son. And He will embrace you. He will kiss you like he did with the wayward son. And that will be just the beginning of the new things in the life of the wayward son, in the life of you and I. And from that moment onwards, he will be holified. He will be cleansed. And he will call the servants and say, bring the glorious garments that I have prepared. Bring the ring and place it on his finger. And you will be baptized with the Spirit again. Wash him so that he may be clean and be able to exalt and confirm the name of God in front of people. And there's great joy in heavens for anyone that repents. As we see in the parable that the father slaughtered the fattened calf, but in our lives the father slaughtered his own son so that we may be cleansed with his blood. He cleansed us through the blood of Christ. That is why you need to pray so that God may bring mercy on you. Because all these issues that are happening around you, what is that? A bad fruition. A, fru a fruit and a result that will not remain. And ruins and despairs are following. There is no good tree that will, have that will bring forward bad fruit. Of course, there is also... Not a bad tree that will bring forward good fruit. The tree can be seen whether it's good or not from his, its fruition. And the fruit explains everything you need to know. The fruit of the Spirit from faith, hope, love, and greater of this is love. From your personal life, the relationship you have with Christ. From your household life and church life. And in general, from your entrance and exit to the church. The way you're walking. That is why. The word of God says that because of you. It's not that I didn't love you. That is why I'm casting you out. But because of your behavior. The results are in that way. As, as you see them. Ruin and despair. That is why I'm asking something from you. Listen to it. But who would shut the temple door so that you would not light useless fires on my altar? I'm not pleased with you, says in verse 10. 
I would rather not even enter to your prayer corner and pray, closing the doors behind you, lighting useless fires on my altar. I would rather not enter until you repent, until you confirm your sins, until you change your ways, your mindset. Until you change the way you think. You're not supposed to walk between two different mindsets or two different paths. You're not supposed to have two different lords. Either you're going to hate Christ and Satan you will love. Or you will draw close and obey Christ. And you will disregard Satan. This is who the Christian is. I, have, I am I'm not accepting your offerings. I will not accept your offering from your hands anymore. I will not even accept your prayers anymore. And now he explains and speaks about the future, something that no one knows about. Because from the setting of the sun, from the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun, my name will be great among nations. That is why. And that is rather what is the mystery of God, of the, res of the reverence of God that is great. Reverence means that you are afraid of God and I am respecting people, all peoples, because I need to love them. But even that brother or this brother, more the ones that are afflicting you, love them more, you need to love them more. You need to love more the one that is afflicting you accusing you, cursing you. You need to pray more for that person. And therefore, that misery is great. And this is what Malachi says, 400 years before Christ even came down on earth. In every place, incense and pure offerings will be brought to my name because my name will be great amongst the nations. And he also confirms that he will be revealed on earth and crucified and resurrected. And he will be, uh, be righteous amongst many brothers after he was resurrected. And he re revealed himself to angels. And then he was, his name was spoken out to the nations. And he... His name was entrusted to the people, not to the people of Israel. The people of Israel will understand that he was Jesus when through the seven year reigns of the Antichrist. This is when Christ will bring down grace into the people of Israel so that they may be saved. But his word was, uh, was revealed to the nations, the pagans. And the glory of God is his church. And he took his church with him. And he came in front of his father. And Malachi confirms these words. And he says that my name will be great amongst the nations. From the rising to the setting of the sun. Not amongst the people of Israel, but among the nations. Outside Jerusalem, outside the the people of Israel and in every place I incense and pure offerings will be brought to my name clean offering pure offering an offering that I can accept that isn't your the animals or anything else is your body and then your offering is pure or your incense is acceptable and what is that incense the prayers of the holy people of God. The offering of your, the sacrifice of your body, because my name will be great among the nations, says the Lord Almighty. My name will be great among the nations, because uh, my name was revealed to the nations, and I was taken up, and I will wait for my church to receive it. And the name of God is great among the nations now. The people of Israel still wait for the Messiah. And 
they will accept the Antichrist as if he was a Messiah because he will be the one that will set the temple. He will build up again the temple uh, of Solomon. But three and a half years later, when he will sit himself on the throne and say that now I am God and he will present himself as divine, then the people of Israel will understand that he is not Christ, but he is the Antichrist, uh, and he was prophesied about by Daniel the prophet. They will repent. They will come back. They will seek the name of Christ. Not because their hearts are going to change, but because God is going to rain down from here the Spirit of Christ to the people of Israel so that they may be saved because of his grace, as we were saved as well because of grace. And now he talks back again to the people of Israel. However, you profane it, says in verse 12, by saying of the Lord's table, it is defiled. Is the, the Lord's table for us today? The answer is yes. It's the communion of the body and blood of Christ. And as we see in the letter to the Corinthians, Apostle Paul says this. You see Israel in flesh. The ones that are eating from the sacrifice, they are the ones that are considered to be the priests. The ones that are eating from the, from the offerings, they are the ones that can be called um, priests. It's the communion of Christ and the one who is partaking from, to the communion of the body and blood of Christ is becoming one with God. And the blood, the wine is not the blood of Christ, it is the communion to the blood of Christ. And the one who is partaking becomes, uh, receives Christ in him. And the one that is eating from the offerings, not the ones that are bringing the offerings, sacrifice, but the ones who are performing the offering and incense, are the priests. And for you, Israelites, for us today, the table of the Lord is defiled and the food on that table contemptible. You are not eating and drinking for your blessing, but for co your condemnation. Contemptible. Because you haven't presented your body as, a, as living sacrifices. And that is your righteous and logical creed. But you are bringing forward what is blind and crippled and diseased. You are not bringing forward sacrifices that are holy and pleasing towards God. And you say, you don't, still don't understand that you're making a grave mistake. And you say, what a burden. We cannot do something for it. And you sniff at it contemptuously, says, says the Lord Almighty. And that has a result. You brought injured, crippled, and deceased animals and offered them as sacrifices. You didn't come really uh, with repentance, cleansed from your sins, because you have indeed forgave others. You didn't come back to God. Therefore, your sacrifice is not blessed. It's not acceptable. And you are partaking into the communion of the body and blood of Christ. Without. You're making your body, presenting your, your body, that is, as a living sacrifice, and now the Word of God is asking, should I accept them from your hands? Should I accept your offering? If we participate and we eat and drink the body and blood of Christ for the remembrance of His sacrifice, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and His resurrection, this is our Easter, Passover. Blessed be the name of God. Therefore, what are you? Cursed is the cheat, says in verse 14. 
cursed is the cheat who has an acceptable male. He has a way in his flock. He has a way to present his body as a living sacrifice, acceptable to God, and having that as his acceptable a logical creed. Have the blood of Christ that can cleanse us from all our sins. When we are walking in light, as God is light, and we have the communion with love with of love with one another if we don't and you don't love the least of your brothers if you are disregarding him if you don't pray for him then your sacrifice is not alive is not acceptable to god your sacrifice your offering your incense is not the acceptable male in your flock and you vow to give it but you sacrifice instead a blemish animal blemished animal to the Lord you are presenting your body as a blemish sacrificed why because indeed you not only didn't forgive your brother who is afflicting you, who is accusing you, or anything else that you can imagine, you didn't forgive him yet. And the, and the reason for it is because you, you don't love him. And you don't love him is because the love you have in your heart is of this earth, Kano. It's wisdom of this earth, and not a wisdom from up above, not a wisdom from God Almighty. Poured out into your heart through the Spirit of God. But it's a useless love. That is why your sacrifice is defiled. And you are not paying attention to it because you are bringing that sacrifice forward. And you don't understand that I am the great King, says God Almighty. And my name is to be feared among the nations. Because the Father God has given him the name above all names. In front of which all knees will bow. On earth, above earth and below earth. And you, you are not repaying your respect or fear it. Because you are not respecting your brother. Because you are not respecting the least of the people around you. You are not reverend, but you are, uh, you are disrespecting God. You are not disrespecting God and you are not fearing the thoughts you have for your brothers. Are you not fearing God? Aren't you ashamed thinking about your enemy in that way? When God says that instead of that you need to love your enemies and pray for them, aren't you ashamed? Aren't you fearing God? And you are waiting for your sacrifice to be holy and acceptable to God? And for God to open up the floodgates of heaven as you bring forward your tenth? You will never accept it. The heavens are closed for you. That is why today, my dear brethren, let us understand, let us comprehend that the blessing of God, and I've said this before, and I'm going to say this again, I couldn't even dare say, bless me God, I'm, bringing, I'm saying, bring mercy into my life. Am I worthy of God's blessing? And even His mercy I'm not worthy of receiving, but He's bringing it in my life because of His grace. Please Lord, bring mercy into my life instead. And the mercy of God has no end. That is why, my dear brethren, you need to be careful, be awake and pray. Study this, remain to this. We are studying this so that we may remain to them. We don't want to exit today and forget what we talked about. We don't want to be forgetful hearers of the Word of God, but we instead want to be doers of the Word of God. I mean to the name of God. We need to be doers of what is good, knowing that the mercy of God 
will be rich, will be great, and the floodgates of heaven will open if our sacrifices, incense and offerings will be holy as we present our bodies as a living sacrifices to God. And we say, Lord, please help us out. Bring mercy in our lives because we are faulty in many ways. And Apostle Paul used to say, I am the least of all the, uh, the holy people of God. You and I, how much more? What should we say then? If Apostle Paul used to say that I'm the least of all the saints, what should I say then? What should you say then? What could I, how, what would I dare say? I am worthless. I am not worth of mentioning. And if I think or even do the word of God in every detail, even then, I need to say that I'm still worthless. A servant of God because I did what I must, what I should have done what I ought to do. That is why our prayer should be, God, help us out. Help us out. God, protect us, Lord. Bring mercy in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. That was the life translation from the church in Kifisia, Athens, Greece.